Hey everyone, my name is Preston Kanick, and what I want to do today is walk you through a few different ways to get rid of the staccato effect in your time lapse. Now, what causes the staccato effect is when you choose a shutter speed that is too quick, where you don't capture that motion in the scene. In order to remove the staccato in your shots when you are shooting during the day, you'll likely need to use an ND filter. And what that does is it stops down the amount of light that can enter your camera, which allows you to shoot with a longer shutter speed. Another way that you can get a longer shutter speed is to close down your aperture. The one downfall with that is you'll likely pick up more dust particles in your final image. So I definitely recommend uh, focusing more on getting the ND filter versus relying on stopping down your aperture to get that longer shutter speed. Now, with these three approaches that I'm gonna to introduce today, they aren't kind of your fix-all solution. They are uh, definitely only gonna work in certain scenarios. I'm gonna just go ahead and jump right into the first of three approaches. The first is using the echo effect inside of Premiere Pro. Uh, if you look here, the first shot I have is of clouds passing through the Golden Gate Bridge. And for this, the shot looks fine to me, but I figured that it might look a little more pleasing to the eye if I was to smooth that out. So in order to apply this effect, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is navigate to the echo effect itself. And where it is, is inside the time folder in your video effects. You can also just search in your toolbar here and it'll um, navigate to that specific effect for you. Once you found it, just drop it onto the clip and you're gonna notice that it comes in really bright once you apply the effect. And what that's basically doing is taking two layers of the, uh, the video clip itself and just adding the exposure levels. Um, this obviously isn't how we want to have the effect applied. First thing I wanna do is just navigate to the maximum setting here on the echo operator and start selecting the number of echoes I want. And obviously I wanna just kinda of smooth this out and create that buttery effect. So I'm just gonna dial this up and you're gonna to start to see how it's starting to replicate the frames on top of each other. So if I kinda of scroll through, you're already gonna see that the effect is starting to, to smooth out that. And you can keep dialing this up and it starts to smooth it out more and more. You're gonna notice though that there is some distinct lines that show up. And what I've noticed with this um, application is the more you kind of play with it and modify the settings, you're actually able to smooth it out pretty nicely. And I find through the decay is where I get the, the best result. And again, I'm not gonna totally refine the look here. You're still gonna see that there's some evidence of the effect being applied, but it is that quick and dirty approach if you do wanna change the look. So again, here's with it just quickly applied and that's beforehand. So it is creating a different look. One advantage to applying this as well is if you happen to have a little bit of flicker in your time-lapse and you don't want to run it through LR time-lapse, if it's you need to quickly get this out to the client, this is one workaround and it will remove some of that flicker for you. Now for the second method, I call it the stacking method and I apply this inside of After Effects and, and kind of as the name states, what the stacking method is, is taking multiple copies of the same clip and layering them on top of each other. Once you've layered these clips, I then bump them over one frame and change the opacity for each layer above each other. So you'll see that as the, opa as the layers go up, you'll see the opacities for each of those layers go down. Um, Kind of the reasons for that I explain on the website and I'll also have a list of the different exposures um, that I use for these different shots. The one thing to keep in mind as always is that you'll want to play with these to see kind of what works best for your given shot. Now if you look through all of these different applications you're going to see some shots work better than others. Here you're going to see that it, it, it worked really well and it looks really nice and buttery. Again if that's the approach you're going for that's great. If you want to tone down the approach all you need to do is select, we'll say we're gonna select seven layers. I'm just gonna turn those layers off and you're gonna see that it's less milky than it was when those other layers were applied. And it's, you can go all the way down to say having only two layers. So you'll see now 
It's a little bit smoothed out from the original, which is here. This is the original shot. And then as you go up, you can start applying the effect and the intensity will start going up in how much that effect is applied. Now, one thing I noticed with this is that it works great for shots like the other one where elements that are further away from the frame are blurred nicely. However, when you get closer to the camera, we'll say like with this shot, it's not gonna be perfect. So you're gonna start seeing that, although it does kind of blur, uh, blend out some of that staccato feel, it just doesn't look real and just it looks super staged. I know obviously the other shots look staged too, but this just doesn't really work. Um, and you, again, you can try different approaches because maybe sometimes it will work. You can turn off these layers to see. It's a little bit better there, but it's still, you're starting to see, like you can visually see that there are different um, layers playing in unison here. There's still hard edges around the people. So, Although this method works for some shots, you can see that it won't work for all different types of applications. The third option that I kind of rely on for um, applying this effect or removing the staccato is what I call the pixel motion blur. So I'm just gonna close out of these sequences and open up, I'll go right to the Fisherman's Wharf example because that's kind of the the worst case scenario out of all of these different options. Now see here when I step through that the shutter wasn't long enough to the point where you can almost recognize people in the shot. The first effect that I apply is the pixel motion blur. So we'll just navigate to that and apply this. And I've found that the default settings are good enough. You're gonna notice though when I scrub through that it, it still is not perfect. It's, it's doing a fairly good job at blurring the staccato effect or getting rid of that. But it's still, you can see there's hard lines along the people here and just isn't quite right. No matter how you change this, you're still gonna have it's, uh, the, the hard edges on the edge of people. So it's just, for me, it just wasn't quite good enough. I found that when you use this in combination with the previous approach, which is the stacking method, that it works best. And I was able to find an effect that kind of takes away the time uh, for doing the stacking method and it replicates a very similar um, approach. The one thing that isn't great about this approach is that it is resource intensive. So you're not able to preview back your clips as well as you are if you were to stack it yourself. Uh, but we'll go ahead and apply with this new approach is using the CC wide time and then dragging this on. And by default, it's stepping forward one step and stepping back one step. So it's getting a little bit closer to um, kind of that smoother look. It still isn't quite right. You still see that there is some uh, jumping between the different frames. So it's not perfect. Um, what I found uh, was great was to dial back the backward steps to zero and then the forward steps all the way. And what I'm doing here is creating more of a base for the final shot more than anything. So here still isn't quite right, but it's at least starting to get the, the background blur or the base layer blur. Once I've got this base layer blur, what I do then is duplicate this layer and then delete the wide time on the top layer and then just work with the motion blur. Now, if you don't change the opacity of your top layer, all you're seeing is that top layer. And obviously that's not what we wanna do here. We still wanna use this base. So what I do is turn down the opacity of the top layer to 75%. This is just kind of a, a starting base for you to work with. Once you start getting familiar with how these effects work, you'll figure out what works best for you. So here you'll see that it's it's from, like I feel that it's more realistic to what it would actually capture in camera if you were to drag that exposure. You're getting less of the double um, application of the layers. So you're not seeing uh, two copies of each person, you're seeing only one, which I think this is getting a little bit closer to um, a realistic look. That being said, what I like to do at this stage, just to up the feel a little bit is the shutter sample. So I bumped this up to 10. And that's for me, it's kind of where I found the sweet spot. What it's doing then is it's making the people less opaque, 
So it's, it's creating that when you do capture that, the longer exposure for shots when you're doing it in camera, it's, it's creating an effect that's a lot closer to this look. So for me, this is kind of um, the numbers I like to work with. And I'll include these specific numbers on the website if you want to dig a little bit deeper into um, kind of um, how much intensity I apply to each of these clips. But um, kind of here is, is again where I found that sweet spot. The last thing that I want to do with this video is show you how to utilize this effect in a way that doesn't um, jeopardize the realism of your shot. So if you don't want to create that milky look, there are still ways you can utilize these approaches to clean up your time lapse, to make elements in your frame less distracting. And the first one that I want to show you is this one here, where you're going to see the tr it was a super windy day and the trees in, in the foreground were moving around super crazy. So I wanted to find a way to really smooth out those trees so they weren't where your main attention was, was taken. I wanted to focus on the cityscape more than the trees. So in order to smooth this out, I'm gonna show you before and after real quick. So here's the before and you're gonna see they're moving pretty quickly and my eye is immediately drawn to those. So I definitely wanna uh, lessen the intensity of that. And all I'm gonna do, the first thing is just select all the layers and pre-compose, which is gonna set, send all of these layers to another sequence. And I'll, I'll label this trees, clean up. You can name it whatever you want, hit okay. And then I'm gonna to navigate to the original time-lapse and just drag it on the bottom. Once I have the two layers together, you're gonna to see here's the original time-lapse with the trees moving pretty quickly. And then the one with the effect applied. All I'm gonna do is create a mask on this top layer to mask out these trees. And this is just gonna be quick and dirty. You can get more consistent or more accurate when you're actually doing it yourself. And all I'm make, wanting to make sure here is the sky isn't touched. So I've selected the whole foreground and you'll see that has closed that off. So if you mask off this layer, you'll see I've just cut out the bottom section. Now, what you can do too, is if you want to refine that mask a little bit, you can feather it out. I'll just do a little bit there. Again, this is just the quick and dirty route. I likely want to spend a little more time cutting out those trees, but you'll get the idea from this. So now when I scroll through, you're going to see those trees are a lot le less uh, distracting than they were without this layer. If I go through this again, you'll see, I probably want to trim the tree up here and clean that up a little bit, but for the most part, that's that's quite a bit better. Um, we'll go ahead and do one more example so you can see how else it can be applied. For here, the water in the foreground for me was pretty distracting. You'll see those waves. We'll clean that up a little bit. So again, your eye isn't drawn towards that. So we'll go ahead and pre-compose this as well. And we'll just name this water cleanup. Again, you can name it whatever you want. And then I'm gonna go navigate to the original, put it on the bottom. And then from here, I'll create the mask again. Make sure that the pen tool is selected. And then we're gonna cut around the water. Just making sure that you don't hit the sky. And there we are. So we have the water is much smoother and the sky remains the same. Now, what I wanna do is just kind of leave you with a, the, the final outputs of each of these shots to, to show the difference between each of these different scenarios. Um, I've went back and I've refined the shot. So inside of Premiere, instead of it being the run and gun, I've spent some time and properly applied this effect. So last thing I'll do is leave you with these final shots. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to comment below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.